This is, I think, close to about 30 years since my last major update in uh, anti-gravity research. And uh, a lot of things have changed in uh, 30 years and some things have not changed. Dr. Nang, Nang Li, uh, uh, a lady that uh, was also trying to work with uh, Dr. Padluknov. Uh, she, she had some promising results by rotating charged uh, semiconductors in the super cool conditions. And suddenly, early in, uh, shortly after the year 2000, she uh, took some money from the government and uh, basically went on the ground to work on anti-gravity projects and uh, she was never heard from again, uh, at least work-wise. She, she probably still has friends and family. Floyd Sweet uh, was a researcher uh, that in 1988 published a paper called uh, Nothing is Something and he had some uh, bar barium ferrite magnets uh, that he had conditioned in a special way uh, where he could feed a very small uh, AC current uh, into the magnet through some uh, ordinary copper coils and uh, was able to generate uh, over unity effects. Um, he even had uh, his device running cooler than the environment and uh, even lost weight in, in one in one uh, test that they did and um, a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but a few researchers have tried to replicate his device um, and uh, have not been successfully doing so, uh, although I did hear some rumor about one guy who was able to, I forget his name, was able to replicate his device and uh, the word is that he suddenly started appearing in uh, expensive clothing and uh, expensive uh, cars and uh, from what I hear was living very well and you know, which seemed to have come across some money. So the question that people were asking is perhaps he sold out his, uh, his technology, his uh, replication of the Floyd Sweet device uh, to somebody, we don't know who or if, if it really happened, but uh, th that's the word on the street that he sold out. Um, but the uh, Floyd Sweet device actually resonates uh, very well with me and the electrogravity theories that I developed back in 1987 uh, because uh, it's using what's called the B cross V field effect. Uh, which is a Laplace, Laplace force. Um, that's the magnetic force effect uh, in the uh, Lorentz uh, force equation. It's not the, an, a pure electric effect, but it's the magnetic effect from the Lorentz force equation. And uh, I like to call it the Laplace uh, force or the B cross V field effect. Then we have a guy uh, called uh, Hooper. Dr. Hooper, he uh, uh, filed for a patent in uh, 1971, I think it was, and uh, he was on to the right concept uh, about electrogravity, uh, that it's uh, a pseudo force of uh, the B cross V field in, in the Lorentz uh, force equation. And uh, he had some of his math uh, wrong and some of his demonstrations were wrong. Um, he, a couple of his demonstrations were just uh, showing the standard transformer type effect uh, and not, not really the B cross V field effect. Although in many cases they are uh, you can use uh, the same math and came. Uh, I mean, the, the different math for the um, for the phenomenon come up with the same answer, but they're actually two two independent uh, electrical type phenomena. One is from uh, uh, moving 
uh, charges and the second effect is from accelerating charges there's a difference there and uh, he <coughs> he was uh, uh, very excited but his effects were very very small it was in the uh, micro uh, volt region for a large uh, capacitor and that's down in the noise and thermoelectric uh, noise level area and uh, when NASA tried to replicate his experiment uh, back in the 90s I think it was um, they found nothing. There was no. They they tried to measure the uh, change in the weight of of an object above uh, a spiral coil, and um, they made a big uh, mistake. And they probably were not aware of the divergent effect of a field, and they just had a linear, quite uniform uh, field effect, and therefore saw no. Uh, weight changes on their test object. Professor Searle, as he likes to call himself, he has no uh, engineering or, or graduate uh, high-level uh, degree, but he, um, he claims to have uh, invented some uh, flying discs back in the uh, uh, I think 50s or uh, even before. Uh, and um, he he uh, has in the last few years, last 10 years, maybe 15 years, been trying to replicate and rebuild some of his devices with investor money, and uh, so far has not been able, at least in my mind, uh, not been able to show any evidence of any electrogravity or uh, 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 any unique special effects to reduce weight of uh, his machine and uh, there's some questions about whether he actually really did uh, build some uh, flying saucers type devices that uh, disappeared on him up into the sky which is what he claimed uh, there are some questions about the authenticity of that so take take the Professor Searle with a big uh, pinch of salt, but it's interesting that his device looks more or less uh, like a device that can uh, generate some large uh, uh, B cross V field effects because of the outer, he has some outer cylinders that ro rotates around a central hub. And uh, uh, if you know anything about the B cross V field effect, the uh, the V in the formula stands for for the velocity, so the larger the lo velocity, the larger the effect will be. And then we've got the uh, Russian version of the Searle device, which I actually feel uh, looks more scientific and more promising. The guy's name is Russian and. Uh, there was another fellow as well, uh, a couple of other fellows, I think. And then they got some American investors. Well, I'm not sure where the investors came, but they had some investors. They got some money, and they built this huge uh, test machine in, um, in Russia. And apparently they did achieve uh, some uh, anti-gravity or some levitation type effects, and they also saw some other interesting effects with... Um, zones uh, around the device that were uh, acting um, uh, yeah I'm not sure how to put it but uh, there were some magnetic fields or magnetic or electric zones around the device uh, about a meter or half a meter apart where they can measure some differences and um, that that whole project uh, disappeared or The, the results uh, from the initial uh, project uh, is is online, but for some reason that was never followed up and continued that work, uh, which is a bit disappointing because that, in my mind, uh, looks very promising and there could be some very strong uh, B cross V field effects. The best way to generate strong B cross V field effects, which is the important ingredient for, for generating electrogravity 
is to rotate uh, charges as fast as possible and um, uh, that's what um, the Russian Searle device was doing. So it wouldn't surprise me if they actually those results that were reported were in fact real. That wouldn't surprise me at all. But it's sad that it uh, technology was not continued the work uh, from what I heard on the on the street was that uh, the device was destroyed or it was stolen and uh, they ran out of money and the usual stories about uh, uh, how the inventors uh, couldn't continue the work because they lacked money.